Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm back with the second part of the 23rd week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be taking a look at a hand from my opponent's point of view. And in the last episode, we saw that J Card Shark opens here from early position. Small blind calls, and here we are with about 40 big, 38 big blinds with pocket nines. And this is actually a pretty tough spot. I, I mentioned in the last video that if I was in this situation with something like nines, tens, jacks, or ace, king, those would probably be the only hands that I would shove with, so I certainly would not hate a shove, which is what uh, this player does. However, I think calling here is also a pretty decent option. I think um, the reason you'd want to call here is because if you shove, J Card Shark is only going to call if he has pretty much like jacks or better, maybe tens or better. And obviously, against that range, nines is going to be in very bad shape. So let's give, um, let's see how much equity we have when we get called first. So let's give us nines. Let's give a calling range of something like this. And you'll see that the pocket nines are in very bad shape when we get called. So that's bad. Uh, so now all we really have to do is figure out how much J Card Shark is opening. So if this is 3.5% of hands, and we think J Card Shark's being aggressive, let's say he's opening lots of pairs, suited aces, suited connected good cards. Let's say something like this. So you see J Card Shark's opening about 14% of hands. So if we get out the calculator you'll see that uh, we take 3.5 divided by 13.7 equals. That means I'm going to be calling his shove about 25% of the time. So now all we have to do is figure out um, what happens when we get called and what happens when we get fold. So 75% of the time, um, our player here wins what's in the pot pre-flop, which is 190,000. plus his equity 25% of the time whenever we get it all in. So that'll be 1.3 million. I'm sorry, 1.1 million times 2 plus um, 100 plus 95,000. And he, so this is how big the pot's going to be. And his equity is... Um, as we showed here, to be 31%. So he owns 31% of this. So we do this number, 711,000, minus the amount he's putting in, which is 1.1 million. And this is going to give us his equity in shoving in this situation. So we have 0.75 times 190,000 equals 142. And then we take um, 711,000 minus 1.1 million times 0.25. Oh, well, screwed that up. Let's do it again. So we're left with um, 142,500 minus 97,250. So this is going to end up profiting 45,000 chips by shoving here, which is 1.1 big blinds. So it's a pretty nice little profit there. I, so because of that, I have no problem with uh, the shove. And this is sort of like the worst hand that I would suggest he shoves with. And if this is the worst scenario when he shoves, I think it's probably going to be a fine play, which is why I do suggest that he shoves with something like uh, nines, tens, jacks, and ace-king. And the reason I showed all these steps is because this is how you go about figuring out if something's plus EV or not. You can actually make an Excel spreadsheet that has all these functions built in, so you just type in the numbers. Uh, I definitely suggest you do that if you want to be running these calculations a lot. Now that's assuming J Card Shark's opening a range that is indeed this wide. Now if he's raising much tighter than that, which some players will, they'll raise stuff like this. 
you'll see now, J card shark's only going to fold something like 0.66, and this will become 0.33, and you see that that will make the calculation a lot worse for the player. So you have 0.66 times 190. So now you see this actually becomes a negative EV shove because we're going to have 124 minus 128. So it's, we're actually going to lose 4,000 chips, which means this, break, this basically break even. That's assuming J Card Shark is opening a much tighter range, which obviously I'm not, but a lot of players will. So in this spot, you really need to know about your opponent's range and what all they are doing. And because of that, if J Card Shark is tight, I definitely recommend a call on the spot with pretty much your whole range besides very premium hands like aces, kings, and queens that you can be happy going with. So what would I suggest that um, this player does? I, don't, I have no clue how to pronounce his name. Um, I, I think that he should probably call here against the vast majority of players. Against players that are opening a lot of hands, he should tend to shove. Um, but in general, I think calling here is going to be good, and that's pretty much that. I would hate a re-raise to, like, 200,000. I think that would be one of the worst plays he can make, because then if he gets called, there's, there's going to be a bad flop a lot of the time. It's going to put him in a tough spot post-flop. And also, if he gets shoved on, he then almost certainly needs to fold. So I would really hate a 200k bet here. So what hand should he be making a 200k bet with? I think he should be doing that with stone bluffs, like... 9-7 offsuit, king-7 suited, stuff like that, and hands like aces, kings, queens, maybe ace-king that he could 3-bet and then call with. So I, I really would only be 3-betting here with a very polarized range. So my shove range is going to be, you know, sort of hands I don't really want to 3-bet fold, but at the same time I don't want to just call with, so like probably jacks, 10s, maybe even queens, and then ace-king. 3-bet range is going to be like ace-king as well, and then monsters and um, air. So, pretty cool spot where your play should depend entirely on your opponent's opening range, which will obviously affect the percentage of the time they call. So, if you have uh, any question about this type of math, I definitely suggest you go to floattheturn.com, which is my training site. We have forums on there where I have a lot of members that are more than willing to help out with any questions, and I get on there quite often and answer questions as well. Um, check out the forums there. They're absolutely free. You can take a look at that. Also, I discuss these concepts thoroughly in my book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. Also, over, over at floattheturn.com, there's currently a study group going where a lot of the members are reading through the book, trying to make sure they digest all of the information, and they're working on becoming excellent players, and I definitely suggest that everyone do that if they want to move up. So check all that out at floattheturn.com. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. Also, if you'd like me to review any of your hands please feel free to send them in. I'm more than willing to take a look at any uh, requested hands. This has been Jonathan Little for weeklypokerhand.com. Thanks for watching.